We're going to be starting a brand new domain read aloud, domain A, all about animals and their habitats. Now in this first reading, it's called what is a habitat, and at the end of this reading, you're going to be able to explain what a habitat is and why living things live in specific habitats. So throughout this reading, you're going to learn about a few different living things and a few different habitats and why is it important that these habitats are different for these different living things. Now before we get into this, we do have some vocabulary. Habitat is just a place where an animal or a plant normally lives and grows. Living, being alive, and having life. And the reason we keep saying living things instead of just animals is because we can have plants that are living as well. So these habitats will be for animals as well as plants and other living things. There's also shelter, which is something that protects from weather or danger. So if you're in your home and it's raining, you're not going to get wet. That's your shelter. It's protecting you. And the last vocabulary word is to survive, which is just to remain alive. And we'll get into the importance of that as well. Now, before we start the story, I do want you to think about some things that are living and non-living. And think about how do you know and how can you tell if something is living versus if they're non-living. So think about that. How can we look at something and really be able to tell if that's living or if it's non-living? Well, to start, living things need food, water, and shelter. All living things need those in order to survive. So people, plants, and animals are all living things because they need food and water to stay alive, and they need shelter to help protect them from the outside dangers that are in the world. So that's how we can tell if something is living, if it needs food and it needs water in order to stay alive. Rocks do not need food or water. They're not alive. Pencils do not need food or water, they're not alive, but trees and plants and dogs and cats are all things that need that food and water to help them survive, so they are all living things. Now, for the story, we're going to meet a character called Rattenborough, and that's him. He is an explorer, and this story is going to be given to us through the eyes of Rattenborough, the explorer, in order for us to kind of explore all of these different habitats, and all of these different living things. So we're going to get started, started with Rattenborough telling us this story. Greetings, fellow adventurers. You are here to learn something new, and believe it or not, I'm here to teach it to you. I know you may be wondering what you could possibly learn from a rat climbing out of a dumpster, but I am Rattenborough, the famous rat adventurer. I travel the world looking at plants and animals in all the different places they call home. I'm going to take you on a special adventure all around the world. You're going to learn about some amazing, incredible places and animals. And we're going to start our exciting journey right here. I know, I know. It doesn't look like much. But it's special to me, and it has everything I need. Welcome to my home. This is the alleyway where I live. Take a look around. What do you see? Well, there are trash cans, litter, boxes, drains and dripping pipes, old buildings and gutters. It's a perfect home for a rat. It has everything I need to live. All living things need food and water to survive. Animals, like me, also need shelter. So, animals need food, water, and shelter to stay alive. My food comes from these trash cans and the litter on the street. My water comes from the gutters, drains, and pipes. And my family and I have shelter down under some steps nearby. All of these things make up my habitat. A habitat is a place where an animal or plant lives that has food, water, and shelter. It's true that my home in the alleyway is not considered a natural habitat, like a forest or a pond, but with so many humans using up so much of the Earth's natural resources, some animals have been forced to survive in human-made habitats. Um, what were those three things again? If a place lacks any of those three things, then it's not a good habitat. Animals and plants usually live in habitats that are just right for them. Just as people can't live underwater or in the air. Plants and animals can't live in all of the same sorts of places. You don't hear about elephants living near the North Pole on all that ice. And you definitely don't hear about polar bears living in the desert. Pumpkins don't grow in the sea and fish don't live in trees. I can tell you firsthand that rats can't live just anywhere in the world. I don't like the weather to be too cold, and I need to live in a place where food is easy to find. That's why I like my cozy little shelter under the steps. It is warm enough for my family and me. There is plenty of water, 
and there is always a good supply of food in the trash. How about we have a look around? You might have a park like this somewhere near your neighborhood. People like to spend time playing and relaxing in the park. But it's a habitat for many other things, too. The grass, trees, flowers, and bushes in this park need food and water to live. The animals that live in the park share it as a habitat. That includes the pigeons that fly around looking for crumbs to eat, the squirrels, owls, owls and chipmunks that live in those trees, the bees, fireflies, and mosquitoes buzzing about, the raccoons and possums that come out at night, and even the frogs and fish in the pond nearby. This is a picture of a place called the Arctic. Do you think you could live easily in the Arctic with its very cold temperatures and snow-covered ground? Not many things can live there, but later I'm going to show you some incredible plants and animals that do live in the Arctic. Most animals have to live in habitats that are specific to them. But you human beings are very clever. You can build habitats for yourselves. If you want to live in the desert where there isn't much water with which to grow food or to drink, you can build a pipeline to bring you water for watering crops or for drinking. You can have food transported to the desert by road or rail because it would be difficult to grow the food in the desert, and you can build houses for shelter so you don't have to sleep in the sand. In fact, people like you have been able to live in extremely hot, cold, and dry places. We're going on an adventure that will take us all over our amazing planet Earth. Over the next several weeks, I'm going to show you some fascinating animal and plant habitats that might be quite different from yours. You'll see some wonderful and unusual places where things can live. I can't wait to show you all these interesting places, but first, I have a lot to pack because we're going all over the world. I'm going to need a backpack full of gear. So hold on to your whiskers, <laughs> I mean hats, and get ready for a marvelous adventure. So now that you've learned a little bit about a habitat and Rattenboro has introduced you to a, a few different animals and plants that need a couple different habitats, you're going to have a set of questions to answer. So once you're done with this, go back to our Seesaw account, look at those different questions, and type your answers right in. When you're all done, hit submit, and we'll be able to see that.